anyone with lungs can get lung cancer. These people are fighting. It makes you want to fight that much harder. She said, I don't want to die because I did nothing. There's still hope. And we believe there's an answer for everyone if you look far enough. I'm Carla Hill, and welcome to Hope is Here. Hope is a powerful word when talking about one of the deadliest cancers. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in this country, and often when one learns they're stricken with the disease, their cancer is already at an advanced stage. To conjure up hope when life seems so desperately full of despair is exactly what Bonnie Adario did when she was diagnosed with stage 3B lung cancer 17 years ago. Not one to give up. Not only did she beat the odds, but later in the program, you will learn how she turned her undying activism into a mission to save countless lives from lung cancer, one patient at a time. Welcome, Bonnie. How are you? Well, thank you, Carla. I'm actually fine today. <laughs> that's right. We talked earlier. It's about living, and we're in the living. That's for sure. That's right. So glad to meet you. Your story is incredible. You know, I want to go back to the day you received your diagnosis. What was it like to hear the four words, you have lung cancer? You know, it's, it's uh, an interesting thing. When I first heard you have lung cancer, of course I was scared and, um, you know, didn't really know what to do next. But it wasn't until I was in that Barco lounger and I was getting chemotherapy that it really dawned on me. It's like, oh, you have lung cancer, you know? And that's when I started, you know, pulling it all together. What was your life like at the time of your diagnosis? You are, and your story is incredible. You were the first woman president of a privately owned oil company. I mean, life was just on a high. And then to get this diagnosis, what was life like pre-diagnosis for you? Well, pre-diagnosis, I, I would really call myself very fortunate. I had um, three amazing children. I had these two darling daughters, but I also have a son uh, in the middle. And um, I mean, life was absolutely fabulous. And, you know, up to that point, uh, my life was just really beginning to be amazing. I didn't always work for the oil company. I didn't always, you know, have a great job. And I didn't always have it really easy. But things were just really kind of coming together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand and that. Then, and then, as a cancer survivor myself, I understand and that. And then. Um, it is uh, a really mm -hmm. big punch to the gut. And I wonder, what was that first week like for you upon hearing the diagnosis? You know, the first week for me was really all about telling my family um, all about, okay, what do I do now? And, uh, you know, coming up with all different kinds of crazy things that I thought I should be doing that we really weren't all that important. But, you know, when you're when you're somebody that um, and my, my girls can tell you this, I never stop going. I'm always moving. I can't say no. I, I, it was really a shift, a big shift in my life. Uh, but what got me out of it really was, am I going to see my children again? You know, those are the things I thought about. It's like, no, I'm not finished yet. I I can't I can't not make it. Absolutely. That is certainly the attitude. And it does take time. It really does. But you know, Bonnie, what really intrigued me in researching your story is the statistics that surround lung cancer. Do you mind going into that for, for our audience? Because I think people really don't understand the magnitude of lung cancer in our, in our country. I'd love to. You know, the, the first thing I say these days are, um, um, more, most people believe that you have to smoke to get lung cancer, mm -hmm. and you don't. You can, you can get lung cancer from many different directions in many different ways, and, you know, anyone can get it. 
quite frankly, anyone can get it. So once we get past that, you know, because education was so important to me.